It is impossible to make containers for infinity, and in the endless attempts to do so, there become endless struggles, and this creates anguish. The infinite is elusive. The totality of even a single moment can never be contained or defined. In the attempt to capture life, it is missed. How is one able to catch life? Where is one going to find it? Over here? Over there? Just as the container called a photograph is not life, it simply becomes an idea that somehow one has marked their territory upon eternity and that the moment cannot then be taken away. Yet, it certainly has been taken away, just as the very next moment is given. Give and take form the everlasting paradox, since they both happen simultaneously. One of the most common methods to combat one's individual fear of this ceaseless fluctuation is through the concept of repetition. In the cycles of repetition, it can be maintained that there is security, since these repetitions or rituals create borders of protection against the infinite unknown. If these borders are removed, it can lead to a feeling of vulnerability. This is seen easily enough in any who are afraid to attempt that which is unfamiliar. The unknown is a security threat against the safety net of the familiar. There are guards that are set up at many gates, and in this way one can become, and altogether too often has become, their own biggest gatekeeper. Why is this? What has created this situation? To comprehend this is to get directly to the heart of the matter. That's the root issue, and let's not pretend that there isn't an issue because there is. When we get to the heart of the matter, we cut to the chase. We don't play games. If you're hanging on the edge of a cliff, holding on for dear life, you're not busy thinking about what color of curtains you're going to hang in your living room or what the weather is going to be like tomorrow. You don't wait on a political vote to take place to see whether you should hang on or let go. You are in that moment and that moment is in you. You are neutral since neutrality indicates that there is no choice and the actions taken in the moment are direct without the need for subjective inquiry. This is the difference between the heart and the mind. The mind is filled with choice, constantly debating this, that, and the other thing. It creates confusion, doubt, worry, anxiety, and is driven by fear and division. Choice is inherently divisive, and in every single division is a wound. The only way to heal any wound is through unification. This cannot be debated. A cut in one's flesh does not heal without being unified, and the divisions in humanity cannot heal unless they are also unified as well. Choice constantly divides and creates enormous pain, and the divisions become so pronounced that they are turned into chaos. From this chaos, the ruler of the mental realm is able to create a different order which subjugates the heart even further, diminishing its capacity to recognize itself in itself. This is how humanity has become food for chaos. It is essential beyond anything else to comprehend that the heart at its root and purity of essence is choiceless. Any who have found their way to its core know this. The heart has no tactics and it never plays games. Its constant and enduring attempt is to heal the separations created by borders and divisions in humanity and build a bridge between the heart and the mind. The left hand and the right hand of the mind are then joined together and there is no longer separation. That's the meaning of prayer. That's the meaning of faith. There is no need for a thousand religions and ten thousand other denominations to know this. The only hate is self-hate. The only love is self-love. The constant ideas of us versus them which creates war, havoc, strain, depression, disease and famine are constructs of that force which fears the unification of humanity, which is why it has created a million different methods to keep us fighting with one another. Divide and conquer. To analogize, 
One part of the body cannot discriminate against another part. There are no passports or borders between the systems that comprise any individual. They are in cohesion and in balance, and if they are not, then they are unbalanced, divided, and then diseased. The individual body is the microcosm to the macrocosm of the entire race. How we treat each other is how we treat ourselves. Infinity is in us, and we are in it. And this means that in the grand scale of infinity, there is also nothing to fear. When humanity is hanging on the edge of a cliff, it is not the politicians that everyone needs to run towards and look to for answers. Their entire operation is to cut and divide, cut and divide. Despite this, it is why it was stated before that eventually, even they will be healed too. When humanity is in any dire situation, and it isn't caught inside of the game of politics, it acts immediately, and it does so with perfection. When the house is on fire, one doesn't decide whether it's the liberal or the conservative party that should put it out. These are all games of the head, and they continue on because there is still some deep-rooted desire to continue the charade because it provides some type of schadenfreudic form of entertainment, a pleasure in seeing distress, misfortune, or failure in others. All of this comes from a limited comprehension of one's connection to everything else. The belief that one is an island and disconnected from all things that are out there. The disconnected mind sees that it arrived here through its mother, but cannot fathom that we have all come from the same mother. In this relation, it can be seen that one has arrived here through one life, yet has come from the source of all life. Since there is a connection to all life, with life itself being consummate with the infinite, there is a direct link to the comprehension that every life is an expression of the infinite. What comes from eternity goes back to eternity. The coming and the going of life are not even opposites or polarities of one another, but simply subjective interpretations for seemingly opposing directions. An arrival to somewhere, by default, indicates that there was a departure from somewhere, and vice versa. Yet, where does the infinite go in the infinite? Since it can't actually go anywhere, it can create stories. And even the stories can create a conceptualization that there are containers for what is and what is not true. The idea that any truth can be contained simply becomes another absurdity, since truth is in alignment with infinity. It cannot be boxed in, or declared to be ultimate and absolute within anyone or in any idea. The moment this is done, it is once again lost. The limited can never contain the unlimited, yet the unlimited contains all that is limited. For those who are able to hear this, there will be comprehension found in the phrase that the truth shall set you free. Life cannot be condensed down into a single moment, or any number of moments, but it can be lived. And when we do not live in the moment, we miss it, because the give and take of eternity is ceaseless and doesn't wait around for us to make our choices. It is relentless, which means that each of us is constantly hanging on the edge of a cliff, so to speak. As we gain time, we are simultaneously losing it. The paradox is always complete. Life's immensity cannot be comprehended, but what can be comprehended is our relation to one another and to ourselves within it. Our pains, sorrows, joys, and pleasures. In the enormity of the incomprehensible, there is common ground found in relating with each other. When this is done freely, without the need to box each other in with limited ideals, beliefs, and concepts, great beauty can be created. The infinite can then flow through us and we can flow through it.